Hi, my name's Neil Davis and I'm the founder of Digital Cloud Training. This video is an excerpt from our upcoming course for the AWS Certified Solutions Architects Associate Certification that is made up almost entirely of hands-on labs. Over 20 hours of practical exercises to give you the knowledge and experience to pass your exam. I hope you enjoy the video and for more information about our courses, check out our social media. So it's time to get into the Elastic file system in more detail now. And I've put this diagram up to show a few more details of the logical topology of EFS. So as you know from seeing a similar diagram before, you can connect multiple instances from different availability zones into the same EFS file system. In fact, AWS state that you can connect up to thousands of instances to a single file system. So it's very, very scalable in terms of the number of instances you can connect. An EFS file system is created within a VPC, but you can also connect a instance from another VPC, and you can do that through a VPC peering connection, or you can do it for a transit gateway. The other method of connecting in is from an on-premises client, which you do over a VPN or a direct connect connection. As with many other AWS services, it's elastic and you only pay for what you use. It also uses a multi-AZ method of storing metadata and the actual data storage itself. And then you can create mount points for your EFS file system across the different availability zones. EFS offers read after write consistency, and you can also have your instances behind a load balancer. So let's head over to the console now. We're going to set up a file system, but before we do that, I want to create a security group. So this one's going to be called EFS Access. And we're going to put this into the custom VPC. And I'm going to create an inbound rule and this is going to be for the NFS protocol. So you'll remember that the EFS file system runs on NFS version one. So we've got NFS here, and what we can do is we're actually going to type SG and then grab the name of the security group. So this will allow inbound access on the NFS port from members of the security group itself. And as security groups are stateful, we don't need to change the outbound rules. So that's that. We can then go to EFS. And we're going to create a file system. And we're going to choose our custom VPC. And so what you can see now is there are three availability zones in this VPC. And by default, they've all been selected. And we have subnets within those availability zones. And IP addressing set to automatic. So what happens is the mount points will actually use an elastic network interface. So you could assign an address here. And then we've got the security groups. And in this case, we're going to remove these security groups and we're going to choose our EFS access security group. There's then lifecycle management. So this is a relatively new service where you can apparently save up to 85% on your bill. So what it does is it takes data that's not been accessed for 30 days and moves it to a lower storage class, so an infrequent access storage class. So similar to S3, where you have multiple storage classes and you can then transfer data which is not being used very often to a lower cost storage. So we're going to leave that disabled for now. We then have two performance options here. There's the throughput mode and the performance mode. So with bursting the default throughput mode, the amount of throughput scales linearly with your increase in file system usage. So as your file system grows bigger, your throughput grows with it. Whereas with provisioned, you add the throughput number, so you specify that number. So for instance, if you wanted to have high throughput, but you had a relatively small amount of storage, you might want to come in here and add this in, and you just have to pay for that extra throughput that's being guaranteed for you. The other thing is the performance mode. So here you have general performance and max IO. 
So Max.io is more for where you have tens, hundreds, or thousands of instances accessing the file system. We're going to leave these at defaults. And then if you wanted to, you could enable encryption. It comes up with a default KMS master key. And you can even enter a key from another account. So this is the summary. It shows us the availability zones, VPCs, IP addressing, etc. We'll just click Create File System. So it usually takes several minutes to actually provision the file system. And we can see here that it's in the creating state. So it's been several minutes now. And we've got our mount points available in all three availability zones. So that's great. This is ready now for us to connect some EC2 instances and mount the file systems and store some data. So that's going to be the subject of the next lab where we're going to provision two instances and connect them both to the file system. We're now going to connect a couple of instances to our file system. And what I need to do is get the file system ID here. And what I'll show you is what I've set up in EC2. Because I, for saving time, I just went and set these up. So I've got two instances. One's in my public availability zone 2B, obviously in the same VPC. And this other one is in 2A. And I've already taken one of the public IP addresses and connected into this server. So what I need to do now is I want to run the command sudo make directory and then you create your mount point. I'm going to put it at mnt slash efs. We also need to install the Amazon EFS utils. So to do that, we can do sudo yum install dash y and then it's Amazon dash efs dash utils. So that's very quick. That should be installed. And what we can now do is sudo mount, let's spell that correctly, dash t efs, and then we put in the file system ID and then colon slash, and then our mount point. And that was very quick, so that looks like it's done. So what we can do now is change to the mount point. And let's try and create a file. So just call it test file. And it says permission denied. Let's try and see what the permissions are. And you can have a look and see that the only the root account actually has access to this directory. So what we actually have to do is go to do sudo touch. Test file. and let's test file 2 etc and now we can actually see that we've got some test files recorded onto our EFS. So the next thing to do is go back to the console and we're going to get the IP address of the other server and connect to that server remotely. So I've just connected into a different instance, our other instance in the other availability zone and we've now got to do exactly the same thing again. So in the interest of time, I just skipped past that bit because I ran the, exactly the same commands as we did on the first instance. And now we want to change directory to MNT EFS. And let's see. And sure enough, now from the other file, we can see the same test files that we created before. So we have our file system select successfully mounted. But if we restart the system, it's not going to mount it again. So to make sure that it does, what we need to do is edit the etc fs tab file and we're going to put in the file system id colon slash and then our mount point slash efs then the file system type and then we type defaults underscore net dev and then zero zero and that should now mean that the file system will be remounted whenever the system reboots and that's it for this lab but we're going to leave things running as in the next lab I'm going to show you a typical use case where we want to create writable subdirectories for individual users